In this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore a DEC PDP 11-34A vintage computer. In the videos so far in this series I've stripped the machine down, gone through a few of the boards, set up one of the back planes as a test jig, I'm using the console to test the various boards and I've got to the point now where I need to start testing the uh, CPU cards. Now the CPU cards on the 1134 draw quite a lot of power, especially from the 5 volt rail. So before I go any further, what I've decided to do is go through the power supplies. If you've ever worked on PDP machines, you know that certain types, the power supplies are a real pain to work on. The PDP-8, for example, it's a bit of a pain. Um, but the 1134 has got a really nice system for the power supplies. And it's based around these drop-in modules. So the uh, tall 10.5 inch case has space for up to four of these. Uh, in my particular machine only three are fitted. There's a spare bay at the end for the um, what is really used for the uh, CMOS battery backup uh, supply. But that's not fitted in mine but if you want to fit it it just drops in and then there are a few screws that hold it in place. So getting these out is very straightforward. There's just two screws at the back they're a bit awkward to get to while this is in the machine but you can get them out and then there's one machine on the rear and then this entire assembly uh, can be unplugged and will just lift out. Now this particular 1134 is the first one I've ever owned but I have repaired quite a few and in particular I've repaired probably 20 or 25 of these supplies. Uh, normally it's the 5 volt supply uh, that has failed uh, but quite often you can do a lot to prevent the failures. Now this is a, a 50, 60 year old machine so um, it's not that surprising that it's, it's starting to show its age a little bit but it's still in remarkably good condition. I do of course need to clean all the dirt and grime and dust that's collected in uh, these uh, supplies um, but they're looking fairly good. But there are a couple of things that um, I have found cause failures in these and it's something that to a certain extent uh, you can um, avoid. So um, what I found uh, for the most part is in these supplies. So if we look on the back of the supply you notice that uh, there's a series of screws here and these are used to clamp the TO3 devices to the heatsink. Um, but over time the board compresses very slightly and it tends to cause these screws to uh, become slack and then the devices aren't pulled tight onto the heatsink and that will cause them to overheat. So what I tend to do is come in here and just check that all these screws are tight. So the first one, that's actually tight, so that's not too bad, although that's not a TL3 package, that's a, a flat pack. Uh, but as you can see, this one's loose. This one's loose. So these are basically finger tight, so they're all likely to be the same. And these are all loose, so the devices are not being clamped hard onto the heat sink and it will make them run very hot. So I'll tighten those. The other point of failure I've seen, so that's a, probably counts for about 50 or 60 percent of the failures that I've seen. About half of the remaining failures um, were down to this device. There's another flat pack device, you can't really see it at the moment, it sits underneath the capacitor and it, it gets fairly hot. I measured it once uh, on a machine that was fairly well populated with boards and this device was getting up around 80, 82 degrees centigrade. And although it makes it look like the board's burning, in fact, this is the main 5 volt supply, this is the one that's been used most in this machine, uh, you can see hopefully the board is starting to blacken. It's not as bad as it looks, it is an old um, supply, but eventually it does cause the board to degrade. But more importantly, with the device running so hot, it does eventually cause it to fail. And as I said, the one I measured was up a little over 80 degrees centigrade. So although I don't normally modify equipment, because I'm intending to use this machine for myself and it will get fairly extensive use, um, I want to make a small modification to this to make this device run cooler. I have done it on one previous machine and um, it brought the temperature down from a little over 80 degrees to just under 60. Very simple modification and it's not a... Uh, a one-way thing. It can be undone if uh, ever the owner wants to go back to the original setup. 
It's just really taking the heat sink off for the clamp off that's on there and fitting a slightly bigger one. So I'm going to go through that in this uh, video. Uh, I'm going to go and clean these up. There's some rust on this. I may at some point um, re-finish uh, this, uh, get rid of the rust, uh, strip it down and, uh, and repaint it. I won't do that in this video. Um, but uh, these modules, they're fairly uh, standard modules. So this one's a 5 volt 32 amp uh, module. This one's an identical module, 5 volt 32 amp. There is a, a voltage adjustment screw on here. Uh, so you can adjust the uh, voltage to make sure it's uh, correct. And then finally we have a minus 15 volt 10 amp supply. Uh, and again you can adjust the voltage on here if you want. And these just all plug in. They're identical in their form factor but um, just make sure you plug the right one into the right slot if you take them out. Uh, okay so what I'm going to do is tighten all the screws. They're probably loose on at least the 5 volt um, uh, version of the regulator uh, and I'll tighten the ones on the uh, uh, 15 minus 15 volt regulator as well but that's less likely they've come loose uh, and then what I'm going to do is just take this capacitor out and I'll show you the modification I intend to make to these supplies so with the capacitor out of the way all I've done is uh, slacken the top screw remove the bottom screw and then the capacitor will just lift out of the way we can see the clamp I'm talking about, it's this clamp down here, and all I'm going to do is make a larger, longer version of this um, clamp plate, and it will extend to about here, and it makes a huge difference to the cooling for this particular device. So it's just a single screw that holds it on from the rear, so if we just take this screw out, then this will just lift off, and all I'm going to do is make, as I say, a longer version of this. You can see by the fact it's turned purple that it's been getting uh, fairly hot. So it's a clear sign that it's been overheating. And this is the device we're trying to keep cool, the green one. Um, so I'm going to make this. Uh, I'll show you the replacement. And um, I'll do the same thing for the other 5 volt supply. The minus 15 volt supply I'm not going to do anything with. That tends not to have the same problem. Um, but I'll go and get a, a couple of these made up in the workshop and I'll show you uh, how they appear. I've cleaned up the supplies, tightened all the screws. I can't find anything wrong with them. I've done the usual static testing, but we knew these worked anyway because uh, I have been running the machine. Um, but it's just nice to get them um, inspected, make sure they're not going to fail for uh, silly reasons. Uh, and they've cleaned up nicely. I've made up a couple of extended heat sinks. So we can see the original on the right here. The new one is over twice the size, but it does still fit in. Um, although it looks like it overhangs other components, it doesn't touch anything. It's not close to anything. And um, I'll just get these screwed in and that will vastly reduce the temperature of this particular device. For anyone that's interested, the dimensions of this, it's slightly wider than the original. So it's 11 millimeters wide. This section is the same as previously. I've actually tapped this to M3 because that's the screw sizes that I uh, want to use on this. And the overall length of this is about 40 millimeters, just under 39. And the thin section is three millimeters and the fat section is 6.5 millimeters. Uh, as I say, it's tapped M3 and um, that hole is 2.5 millimeters from this shoulder. So that's all um, these are. It's a very simple um, update or upgrade to the supply, but it does make a big difference. As I said, I tested one of these previously and fitting one of these made a huge difference to the temperature of this particular device. And it also stopped the board from uh, further discoloring. So I'll get these screwed into place. I'll refit the capacitor. I'll do the same to the other one. And uh, I'll just show you this once it's been screwed in so you can see uh, how it looks when it's inside the supply. So that's how it looks when it's fitted. Uh, I did put some thermal paste on the mating surface on this surface where it presses up against the device. That should help to keep it uh, cool as well. And uh, then I put a new screw in. So um, all I need to do now is refit the capacitor and this um, regulator is ready to go back into the main chassis. 
I'm going to do the same thing with the other 5 volts supply and um, as I say I'll leave the minus 15 volt as it is, it cleaned up nicely, couldn't find any faults with that so I'll put all three of these back into the main chassis and um, hopefully they'll still work um, that's it for this video, a very quick video today and in tomorrow's video or the next video I will be going over the Unibus and giving a brief explanation as to the Unibus itself, uh, the back planes, uh, the general configuration for them. I'm not going to go into massive detail as to what all the signals on it are, I'll probably touch on them briefly, but it's mainly the general concept behind the Unibus. Uh, I've been asked uh, quite a few times to explain this so I thought I'd uh, include that in the next video.